Hi, I'm Jim. I'm Mark. And we have over 65 years of bushfire fighting experience between us. We've partnered with UE to help people prepare for bushfire season. Doesn't matter where you live, we're going to give you some tips and some ideas around how to prepare for the long run, but also what to do if a bushfire is approaching your property. I've been a firefighter for over 44 years. Started off in the fire service in 1980. I've held every rank in the fire service from recruit through to acting commissioner. Yeah, I've been with the fire service in New South Wales for over 20 years. I've attended fires in the Blue Mountains and more recently in Black Summer. Um, most of my time has been spent as a frontline firefighter. What we hope to gain from this video is to give people insight into how bushfires occur, their behaviour and how to prepare your home. It's never been so important to prepare your home as now. Australia is prone to fires. Whether you live in the north or the south or the east or the west, we have a dry, arid climate and we have lots of vegetation. These things mean that we're always going to have bushfires. Climate change is influencing fire behaviour. It's getting more intense and moving much quicker. As the climate changes, we have higher levels of fuel and we have drier fuel. And the weather also makes the fires move so much faster. When I was in the Blue Mountains during black summer, one of the local firefighters said the fire was about three days away. Three hours later, the fire arrived at the ridgeline. The strong winds also cause what's called ember attack. And this means that the fire jumps well ahead of the fire front. So even if you think you're a long way from the fire, you can sometimes get caught out by an ember attack. The Black Saturday fires in Victoria changed a lot about the way fire services think. Before that, it was always you can stay and you can go, but you need to be well prepared for what it is. Now, the safest option is to leave early. Increased intensity and speed that fires move mean that you have less time to get out of the way of a fire before it comes in. As a fire is approaching your property, if you've prepared it well, you should be able to leave and let the firefighters look after it. What you need to do firstly is well prepare your house and then have a few triggers that will determine when you stay or when you go. If you want the best chance for your house to survive a bushfire, you need to start preparing as early as possible. When we show up to a house, we can tell straight away whether it's been prepared for a bushfire. So if your property is well prepared, we can go in quickly, defend your property and then we'll move to the ones that are more difficult to protect. Good bushfire preparation takes a team. It's not just your property, it's the properties on both sides of you that are going to impact your survivability. It makes sense for you to work as a community, know the people in your street, in your area, and help them prepare as well. One of the communities that I visited down in Tartha, they had a really engaged community. They looked after each other when the fire was there, but they really looked after each other after the fire had passed. There's many fire services that have programs to help bring communities together community fire units, we give people some equipment, we train them and they come together really well as communities. They started off having some knowledge, then they become a real community and work hard with each other. And the best benefit of those community fire units are the preparation that happens before the fire. We don't necessarily want community fire units to be hanging around when the fire front arrives, we want them to do all of the work beforehand. Knowing your neighbour and working with your fire service will give you the best chance of survival. So know who lives in your street, know who needs help, and know who can help. I attended the fires in 2019 and back on a truck, and I saw the conditions and what they were like, and it worries me what the next fire will be like. So the only way we can survive in the future is to be much better prepared. And that means as fire services, as individuals, and as communities. We can learn lots of things on how to look after the landscape and the country from Australia's Indigenous peoples. They've looked after this land for thousands of years and they have some real useful techniques in looking after land management from a bushfire perspective. Building codes for new buildings have really started to improve and now when you build a new house in a bushfire prone area, you're required to build a far safer, more resilient home. The good news is that this also makes it much more environmentally friendly. It takes far less energy to heat a well-built house and it is far easier to protect it if there's a bushfire. To recap what we talked about in this video, ensure your home is prepared and work with the community around you so that everyone is ready. We need to build bushfire resilience in our buildings and households. This is something you can all do and be a part of. When it comes to bushfires, you can never be too prepared and neither can your home.
For more useful tips on bushfire preparedness, click the link in our bio.